Hello everyone, welcome to problem 3.14 of David Griffiths Electrodynamics. So this problem states that for the infinite slot in example 3.3, which I've drawn here, determine the charge density sigma as a function of y on the strip at x equals zero, assuming it is a conductor at a constant potential v naught. So as we see here, we have our uh, two metal strips, infinite metal strips, and then we have our uh, metal plate, the uh, conducting plate that connects um, the two, and um, it's a constant potential v naught, and it sits at x equals zero. So this is the x-axis, y, and z coming out of the board. Um, this is just a reminder of uh, Laplace's equation solution in Cartesian coordinates is this, where the coefficients are equal to this. So we want to find, you know, given that this is at a constant potential, um, We've already solved what the actual potential function is in between the plates, um, but now we want to figure out what how the charge distributes itself on this metal plate. So, from I believe chapter two, there's an equation that um, the partial derivative of the potential with respect to the normal direction of the uh, surface that you're that you're interested in is equal to minus sigma over epsilon naught. So this will tell us that sigma, which is the charge density, is equal to minus epsilon naught times the partial derivative of the potential with respect to the normal uh, direction. So from uh, example 3.3 in the book, you can find that the potential uh, function v of x, y is equal to this, already solved. So it's uh, four v naught over pi. And instead of n, I'm summing, I believe, uh, it's the same, it should be the same uh, notation here. Um, sorry, actually, this should be n. So everywhere, I accidentally got this from another problem, and I left it in. But I had a 4j plus 2. That's actually from the previous problem. And I'm trying to find my black marker here. This should be n. So anywhere you see 4j plus 2, um, just replace that with n. So I'm going to try to do it as I go. So the solution is it, we're just summing over the odd numbers here. So where n is equal to 1, 3, 5, etc. So the solution is 4v naught over pi and the summation over n equal to the odd numbers to infinity. And we have the exponential function e to the minus n pi x over a times sine of n pi y of, divided by a, and then the whole expression divided by n. So that is from example 3.3, just straight out of the book. If you don't know how the solution was reached, just uh, work through the example of the book. So. That tells us that the, the charge density here, I'm not gonna go through and replace 4j plus two. Anywhere you see 4, 4j plus two, I will say n. So that way, you know, it's just easier. So the charge density is in 4v naught over pi, those are constants, and it's the partial derivative with respect to the normal direction. And in this case, the normal direction to the surface is the x direction. Oops, sorry about that, guys. So we're taking the derivative with respect to the x of this summation, and so, it's just the same function in here, and everywhere you see 4j plus 2, you're replace with n. Then, doing the actual derivative, the only piece of this function that depends on x is the exponential function. Well, the derivative of an exponent, exponential function is itself, and if it has any extra arguments in the, in the exponent, um, you just multiply it by that. So, the derivative becomes, um, we get a minus sign here, I forgot this, uh, oh yeah, the minus sign comes from this equation. So there's a minus four v naught, and then the epsilon naught pi that comes from here, and then pi over a comes out, and then the n. Uh, there should be an n. Oh yeah, so it's the four j plus two. So at the end here, four j plus two, you could just think of that as n. Um, I've left the n inside the sum because. Uh, it should be inside the sum. So instead of j here, this should be n to remember that. So the pi over a just comes out because they're constants. And then the summation, 
Then we just have the exponent. We just have the same function again. Uh, nothing changes. So e to the minus 4j plus 2 pi x over a, or sorry, e to the minus n pi x over a times sine of n pi y over a times n divided by n. So the n's cancel. And we get that the charge density sigma of y is 4v naught epsilon naught a. And this minus sign uh, from, I believe the minus sign from the exponent when it came down cancels with this minus sign here. And so we just get um, 4v naught epsilon naught over a times the summation n, n equals you know, 1, 3, 5, all, all numbers to infinity times just sine of 4j plus 2 pi y over a. And why? Where did the exponent go? Is because we're evaluating this at x equals to zero. So because we want to know what the, the charge density function is at uh, the strip here, that's at x equals zero. So in this function we've derived, we just plug in x equals zero. So e to, that just makes it e to the zero. And you think that the zero power is one. And so we're just left with the sine function where the n's canceled out and just have our constants out front. So this is what our charge density is. Sorry for the confusion with the j's and stuff, but I hope it wasn't that hard to follow just because there's not much math here. So um, if you guys have any questions or confusions, please let me know in the comments below. I'll try to clarify it.